Are you bored of wagons with only two doors or just a single color with no options like simulated wood grain or horse collar grills or push buttons for where the horn should be or boomerangs for taillights? Well, if you're bored with those kind of wagons, then I've got the wagon for you. And it's not the Homer and it's not the family truckster. It's the amazing Edsel Bermuda. Why drive something normal when you can drive something weird? My little brother's doing his part to keep Austin weird, driving his Edsel wagon. So, uh, we drove 500 miles yesterday just to come down here and mess with my little brother's wood on his wagon. The wood paneling is faded. Looks pretty bad. It's all faded to white. He's got some new stuff over here. So this is 3M vinyl. And today we're gonna install this on this car so uh, so he can get it back on the road and make it look right. Before we put this wood grain on. So uh, what he's doing is he's removing the door panel because there is a crease in the door. You can't really see it. It's just a little crease. And we're gonna push that out and fix it up before we put the uh, wood grain on. We stuck a little wood grain on right here just to check to make sure it's it's opaque and that you can't see through it because you see we did repaint this fender because of some damage. Nope. All right, this is something a lot of people have trouble with is using one of these tools to take the door handles and window cranks off. So I'll show. Right here, you wanna get in between. There's a little nylon gasket between this and the door panel. Get it, push, and you should feel pop comes off. See, it pushes this little clip back. Another trick that some people have trouble when you're putting it back on, don't try to put it back on and use the tool to push it like this. You can, but that doesn't, that's hard. Just push the clip back in, put the nylon back, position it, and then just whoop, move the nylon up and pop. There you go. Now it's on. Sweet. Okay, yep, soapy water. Okay, now, basically we're gonna try to line up these lines, right? Too yeah, hot. That one. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so we, we need to I'll, I'll get like your eyes here. Okay. Perfect. All right. Side one is done and looks good. Now we gotta move on to the other side. After a full day of work, we're on the last piece, the tailgate. Now that we have a finished product, let's talk about this strange creature, the Edsel Bermuda. So, uh, Edsel, tell me about Edsel. Well, Edsel, yeah, was one of, was Ford's probably biggest failure. Um, while they didn't explode like the Pinto, they were such a flop in sales, they almost exploded for it. Oh, wow. Yeah. So this, uh, you can see this has everything piled onto it. Like the Bermuda would have been the... This would have been the top of the line station wagon offering. Uh -huh. So, what's under that? Yeah. So, the Edsel only came with the two engine options. This one would have been, they had an E400 and an E475. And those numbers aren't cubic inches, they're for the torque that they put out. Okay. So, the E400 would have been the smaller one. Um, but it was the E400 was based on an FE rather than being based on a, uh, a Mel engine, that type of engine. Okay. So this one here is not, you know, is not the original engine. It's been a little souped up. Uh, it's a 390 with a 428 crank, okay. which makes a 410. 410. But okay. it's not the Etzel 410. Everything's been thrown at. It's got, um, it's got a modern alternator. It's got vintage air. It has a uh, power steering. It has a Borgeson box, the Saginaw style pump, and one of the things that it has that makes it a little bit more reliable is that I did do a Holly Sniper. So this is a bolt-on fuel injection that they that you can put on pretty much anything. You're talking about the horse collar, you're talking about yeah, yeah the, the famous or infamous <laughs> Edsel grill that uh, 
Bob Hope was real proud of. Uh, this told you you bought an Edsel, and later you were also shamed for having this grill That's in your right. car, right? So yeah. Edsel, is that what this is? Yes, well, so this will get them out in the highways. I want to tell you that. So this color is the most rare of the colors. I, What's it called? It's a called Sunset Coral. Really? So Are you sure the, it's, it looks pink to me? It's very pink, it, It's a, but it's a very masculine pink. Yeah, I, I can tell. This is yeah. like, if you would have bought a refrigerator in 1958, you probably would have got the matching pink refrigerator to go with your pink Edsel, right? So let's, we'll take a look at the inside. Okay, yeah, so uh, it actually has a, this is all original interior. You'll see they had a distinct pattern on the front seat, rather than being a 50-50 split. They did a 40-60 split. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure the reasoning behind it, but that was uh, one of the things that Edsel chose to do. Um, it was a 28,000 mile car. Um, and it it was uh, owned by uh, maybe one to two people in its life and eventually sat in a garage for 20 something years and uh, came to me. Cool. So Edsel had a really unique gauge as you can look at the dash and see this. And it also had one of the most famous things about the Edsel was it's uh, one technology was Tell us about the shifter. So this was called the Teletouch shifter, and it was the idea to use um, push button shifting to shift your transmission right in the steering wheel, because this is gonna be the center of your driving experience. And here's how easy it is to drive. Can you flick that light switch? Why, certainly, anyone can. Then you can drive the Edsel. That's right. Driving the 1958 Edsel is as easy as flicking a light switch. So these things were notoriously unreliable. They had problems uh, with slipping out of park, going into park, or burning up the circuit breakers, shifting out of park if you parked on a hill. I actually built a uh, modern digital version of Teletouch that I put under the seat. Okay, so um, what, so is it, that, what so does that mean? <laughs> what, it, exactly, what it means is um, I used modern electronic components and put together using a, what, an actuator that uses a cable to shift your transmission. Okay. So when you hit these buttons, instead of uh, using what the original was similar to, like a windshield wiper motor, this uses a modern actuator to shift your transmission. So uh -huh. you can reliably shift to any gear. Okay. It's a few hundred lines of code that yeah, have code in there for safety features, such as not allowing you to shift in the wrong gear while you're traveling. It uses a vehicle speed sensor in the transmission. Um, and make sure you're holding the brakes when you shift out of park. So you can keep both hands safely at the wheel. And look, you can shift and turn the wheel at the same time, where the control remains stationary, which makes Edsel the world's easiest car to handle. You'd get angry at someone, or you'd see your neighbor, hey, buddy, you'd honk, and you'd accidentally shift gears. <laughs> Doesn't have these. So tell me about these taillights that look like, you know, a boomerang or something. These, these were also a notorious part of the Edsel, because at night, you'll notice they point the wrong direction. So when you do oh. a right turn, it would point like you're doing a left turn. That's pretty funny. These are like chevrons. Yeah. And they'd be like, I'm turning left. Yeah. But no, I'm turning but left. But they were they were known to cause confusions. Actually, that is a, they were, <laughs> they were is an amazingly <laughs> funny thing to do. They almost were nixed from the design, but uh, they were so focused on having these to differentiate them from the 57 Ford. Wow. That is so amazing. Teletouch, you had to put it in neutral before you could do anything. Most people would park it in neutral because the park was so unreliable to get in and out of park. So how did you keep your car from rolling? You know, they put they pull the emergency brakes, or some people would carry it on tire chocks. I've heard stories of people who would, you know, just risk it parking against curbs and stuff. Really? Yeah. But you can watch this. I'm going to do something unthinkable in the normal lights. I'm going to go straight from park to drive. You couldn't go straight from park to drive. Now they would recommend you always went to neutral between any. This actually had dial and tap. Uh, you had a, uh, a knob here that you turn for heat and cool, and it had this servo motor like under the dash. This really complex thing. You turn this little ser servo motor, pull and push cables to operate the heater or air conditioner, whatever you had originally. So yeah, this thing drives pretty good. I mean, it's kind of like. 
you can touch your wood, but you can't touch your friend's wood. You can if you make it look like an accident. <laughs> <laughs>